Welcome back. Today on Dialed In DIY, I'm showing you my easy way to make some rechargeable battery packs to help save you some time and money. I have a whole playlist dedicated to videos where I take stuff apart and show you what I salvage like lithium ion batteries. I'm combining that today with another video project I did using a little charging chip to make reusable battery packs and I only spent $1.95 on each battery pack. That's pretty cost effective. So let's jump in. The individual cell I'm using in this project today is a 3.7 volt battery that came out of a laptop battery pack that I had salvaged. But there are tons of other options where you can salvage a lithium ion cell to use in a project like this, and in many cases, like the ones on the screen here, you can find them as a single cell that you don't have to take apart from a previously assembled battery pack. To prevent destroying your battery and potentially causing a fire, make sure to take one of the wires that you're connecting to the cell and tape it up so that there's no way it can accidentally short itself out. This little board that we're connecting to the battery does an amazing job. It not only provides the power to charge the battery, but it protects it from overcharging and over discharging. So it's really quite an amazing little tool. I've had such great success with this piece in multiple projects that I actually dedicated an entire video just to sharing more information about what it can do. So if you'd like to see more of that, check out the description below to see a link to that video. So on this end of the board where we're putting most of the wires, you'll notice the two in the middle are the ones that go to the battery. Make sure to get the polarity right when you're hooking these up and remember which ones they are. And the two outside leads on this are actually the ones that will go to whatever the device is that you're going to power with the battery. I want to be able to control the power coming out of the battery pack, so I am putting in a push button switch. I'm going to go ahead and take two leads and attach them to the switch, but I am not attaching them to the battery or anything else yet because we need to put the switch into the case first. You'll notice I marked a spot to put the power connector for the board on one side of this box, and on the other side of the box I'm marking the spot where I need to put the switch in place. So you can either drill or cut to put these holes in there, or you can do what I did and just take the easy way out and go ahead and melt them in in a kind of a rough fashion. I go back later and I clean them up and sand them down and make sure that it fits just right. As I complete each new hole or opening to put something, I go ahead and test the fit and also make sure that the case will still close because if it doesn't, there's no sense going ahead and trying to finish the rest of the project until we fix that. I'm going to go ahead and attach this battery to the top of my case using double sided mounting tape because I have it. If I didn't have the mounting tape, I probably would have just used Gorilla Tape or Duct Tape or maybe even some Velcro. Since everything now fits, I'm going to go ahead and take one of the wires coming off of the switch and connect it to the positive out from our charging board. You could use the mounting tape again to set the charging board into the case, or you can do what I did and just grab the hot glue and force it down there because that works too. I've learned from many other projects, like putting a fan inside an Altoids tin, that anytime you put a charging port into the side of a case, it's always good to support the back end of it, because once you charge it, plug it, unplug it, plug it, unplug it, you do run the risk of having something kind of move around a little bit and come loose. So I just took a couple pieces of scrap plastic and I'm gluing those in behind the charging board so that it can't get pushed back against the back of the case. I'm also going to wedge a quick connector in between the switch and the board because this is just a little step of awesome. Using one of these allows you to quickly and easily connect and disconnect your device from your battery. To 
mount this little quick connect or terminal block as it's also called, I'm using the hot glue again. A little tip anytime you're mounting plastic to plastic with hot glue, it's a good idea to go ahead and clean it up with some rubbing alcohol. Now, rubbing alcohol will evaporate quick so you can glue quick, but it also makes sure that you get a good adhesion. You should be at the point where you only have two free wires left and you're going to put one in the back of each side of this little terminal block. Make note of which one is positive and which one is negative and you might even want to do what I did and take a little sharpie and mark that on the top of your terminal block. I have a handy little digital voltage meter that I'm going to plug in here to test this out but you could use LEDs or anything else that you'd want or whatever you're going to operate it with to go ahead and run your test using it this way so I can show you that the battery does have a full charge. And we've also been able to prove that the switch does cut the power out from the battery. Charging purposes, this little chipboard is designed to take a 5 volt USB power source in. So whichever method you're going to go ahead and use, grab your connectors and plug it in. Connect that to the wall and when you see the red light come on, that means your battery is now charging. When it switches to blue, your battery is fully charged and ready for use. Speaking of use, the reason I made this to begin with is because I had a little touch light that burned through these AAA batteries. So I just kind of rigged a way to wire it in there, connected it up, and now I have a low cost rechargeable way to run my light. Thank you very much for taking the time to stop by Dialed In DIY today and check out my video. If you liked it or even just got something out of it, let me know by clicking that thumbs up below. I'd appreciate it. And as long as you're here, go ahead and subscribe so you can come on back to see other videos of mine. And if you have some thoughts for using a battery pack like this or other ways to maybe make them, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you.